Hello, it's great to be back. Um, I just wanted to dive right in to a simple demonstration on when you should use VEX or VOPS or HScript or Python or all these different coding languages in Houdini. Because some people are like, oh, should I learn VEX or should I learn Python? And the answer basically is as you go throughout learning Houdini, you are going to want to learn some Bex, you're probably going to want to learn some Python, but it may not be totally necessary all at once. In fact, it's not totally necessary at once. And as you go and continue to learn projects, you'll probably just pick up more on Bex along the way. So from a high level perspective, Python is actually um, a scripting language that's going to be a lot slower than Vex. And so it's usually used in tools and uh, different operations. So for example, if I just drop down like a sphere here uh, at the object level, usually Python with tools, um, if you make your own tools or if you're using tools here in Houdini, it's uh, used for like buttons and different things that do automated tasks that will either interact with the Houdini environment or sometimes interact with other things. So for example, so if I just drop down a file node and then I click on the file icon to then search and peruse through different files, what it can do is um, you could you could essentially make like a Python coding script that will that could you know maybe filter different things or, or, or do different things. But for the most part, when you're using everyday projects, you're probably going to use more uh, VEX. So what is VEX? Well, VEX is kind of like a standard, um, basically C++ style scripting language. So a lot of the syntax syntax that you'd have in C++ is going to be here. But also it's uh, it's actually a little bit simpler as well um, because it's you just type little snippets. So I'll give you an example here. So I drop down a simple sphere, okay? And on the sphere we have, uh, you know, each each face here is considered a polygon and Houdini and then um, I can click to, to view these points here. And we see that the sphere also has points. So I, um, I can select these and to select those, you just hit S on your keyboard and then you hit, can hit two. Uh, well, that changed the view there, but um, now I can just select these by hitting S and then you hit two. Okay, so I'll hit four to then select polygons as well. Okay, so that being said, I'm gonna drop down what's called a point wrangle. Now, this point wrangle is essentially a node that lets you type custom VEX code snippets to operate on the points. Um, you can also drop down a primitive wrangle and this is the same thing, but it just runs over the primitives instead of the points, okay? So um, to give you a quick demonstration here, if I was to plug my sphere into this point wrangle, I could say, um, here's a simple function that's already built into VEX. I could say remove point um, and then the it asks for a geo handle, which is essentially the input coming in. So um, the only input coming in here is the first input, which in code though, the first input would be classified as zero. So this input would be zero, this would be one, two, and three. So I would say zero, and then there is a couple of attributes that are always there, and one of them is the point number. So I will type in at point num and then hit semicolon. So what this does is essentially runs over every single one of these points here on this sphere and it deletes them because it's running over all of them. Okay. Now, if I wanted to say, let's say I just want to remove, um, if I toggle on my point numbers here, let's say I just wanted to remove point zero. Okay, so I can do that. I'm going to click this little bypass icon so it won't execute the code. If I wanted to just remove the zeroth point, I would say if at point num is equal to zero, then 
go ahead and remove the point. Okay. So if I uncheck the bypass, it now removed that zero width point. And a lot of polygons were connected to that point zero. So it in turn also got rid of those, whatever were connected there. Okay. So if I wanted to say instead, let's just get rid of, let me toggle on the primitive number. Let's say I want to just get rid of the primitive number. You can't just um, necessarily switch this to run over the primitives and have it work the same. Okay. Because um, essentially it is running over the primitives and the, and the only reason this is still working right now is because it is taking in a zero input and it's basically saying um, remove the this at point num is not going to work while we're running over primitives but because it's got to default to some number it's essentially running over zero so that will still work but this execution here doesn't mean anything you know I could even just type in at point num again and uh, oh well I guess all of them are deleted um, to be honest I'm not sh quite sure why it works that way because you know it still says we have all these primitives so uh, there we go even new things that uh, I didn't quite realize would happen um, maybe somebody knows better than I do as to why that is the case but anyway from a uh, from what you actually need to know if we wanted to say just delete this polygon right here from the primitive standpoint so this is no longer a point wrangle it's technically a prim wrangle but uh, from a broader standpoint it's just called an attribute wrangle um, we could say remove prim and here we will give it the first input and now we need to classify a prim number so if I said at prim num um, it also takes in a third input and the input is either a zero or a one um, the zero meaning just delete the prim and not the points surrounding it and then the one would be delete the polygon and any points that are attached to it so I will do that here and we see that it deletes all of the prim numbers so we would have to say if at prim num is equal to zero then essentially just remove the zeroth prim. Now you might say, well, why is that one zero now? It's because Houdini internally is going to renumber all of these polygons, but it did essentially from the input that we had, it was right there. It did get rid of that one. So that is a very simple explanation of kind of like what you can do with VEX, where it's just, it's a simple snippet of code that you're operating on your geo essentially so what is what are what are vops or what if, what if you don't want to type in code or use vex you can use something that's called vops and everything that you can do in vex you can do in vops um, if you've used unreal engine before it's like the difference between doing you know standard c plus plus coding or blueprints you can kind of do the same things one's more visual so you can see that if i type point bop that we have a point VOP right here. Okay. So if I plug in a point VOP here, we see that we have nothing happening because if I double click and go inside here, nothing is being executed on this point VOP. But this is a node based visual kind of code um, sector. So if I jump back to my attribute wrangle in Vex, I could say, let's say I'm going to look at the attributes on this sphere. So I'm going to middle mouse click over my sphere and we see that we only have one point attribute and it's called position. Okay, so I'm gonna do something with that position. I'm going to say my at P, um, and if you wanna be explicit, you could do V, which stands for vector, at P, um, let's say dot x so any it's only going to operate on the 3d position in the x coordinate let's say it is plus equal to one so it's going to add essentially one to the x position of every single point here now if we had wanted it to only operate on a 
single point or a couple points, we could have, you know, perhaps used a cluster of points here. So maybe maybe I'll just say if at point num is equal to 122, then add one to the x component. And we see it updates that single point num. So what if we wanted to not focus on vex code and do the same thing in bops? Well, we could do that. Okay, so let's jump into bops. Now, uh, the nice thing about bops is uh, it already gives us some standard attributes that typically are found on a lot of geometry in, in Houdini. So right now it's already giving us our position vector, but you could essentially pull in any attribute on your geometry. The way to do that is you just do tab bind and um, this you would type in the name of whatever attribute and then you'd be able to um, grab it here. So right now we see that this, uh, you see how this is kind of like a more bluish green. That's usually an indicator that uh, the attribute you're pulling is a float attribute. Um, and then this, more green saturated green uh, indicates a vector. So what I can do is split up this position vector by dropping down a vector to float node. So what we're doing is we're taking the position, we're gonna plug it into here, and now it's split it into the three components, kind of like when I here split this position into just the X component. So this is X, Y, and Z components of the position. So what I could do is drop down a add. I'm going to plug in my X component to this add. I'll drop down a constant. It's a float and I'll label it one. So it's going to add one to the X and then I'm going to drop down a float to vector. Uh, where is it right there? And what I can do is now plug in the new addition added X component and then the original y and z values of this, this data and plug this into the position here. So now it moves all of the points kind of like um, we did with our vex. It's the same thing. It, it, it's operating the exact same way. So now instead of moving all of the points, like we already did that in vex, say we only wanted to isolate one point here in bops, Again, we can do the exact same thing. What we have to do is set up a condition, okay? So I'm going to type in condition or compare, sorry. And what we have here is our handy dandy point nums from kind of like what we saw in VEX. So this is basically going to read in, it's going to run over every single point. And as it runs over every single point, it's going to um, tell us the point number. So it's going to run over one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way till it runs over every single point. And as this feeds in here, we're going to say, hey, is the point equal to 122? And if it is, this output is going to return a one. And if it's not, it's going to return a zero. So it's gonna run over every single point, And this is only going to be true on point 122 because that's the condition. So then we can drop down an if block and essentially what happens here is I'm going to plug my condition in here. And basically this whole operation that we did here to move all the points, we're going to plug that in here. And then we can take that output here and plug it into the position. So what's going on here? Basically it says, hey, once you are true, if you are true, then whatever operation was coming through here, do that. But see, it's only true, it only executes true on point 122. So at this whole bit of snippet or code, just visual code, I would say, this is only executed one time on point 122. Every other point that it runs over, it doesn't do this this, uh, this output is not conditional on here, and so it actually only does this for point 122. And to show, I mean, there's point 121, we could even change that to 121, and we could see that it updates there. Okay, so if we jump back out here, this is using 
bops, and this is using vex. Same thing, same result. The only difference is one is text-based, it's code-based, and the other is kind of more visual-based, but it's still, this is still operating and doing vex code underneath the hood. It's just kind of whatever you prefer to use. So if you're wondering, should you jump into vex? Should you learn Python again? I wouldn't worry as much about Python, especially as you're starting as a beginner. I'll probably show some more tutorials later on how you can integrate Python with tools, but I would just focus on understanding how VEX operates on the geometry. And VEX, again, is the code that you can, you can manually type in, or you can just use visual uh, coding here to do the same thing. Um, you can do the same result um, in some cases, it's actually better to use point bops, um, especially if you're using any sort of noises or like I'll just a ending example here. If I wanted to use a noise and add that to my position, I'll just, um, sorry, jump back in here. I'm going to delete all these. I'm going to add some noise, some 3D noise here. It's much easier to do something like this in uh, Bops than type it in through code with Vex. You can, but it's a lot more easy to just control how you want the, the exact noise and everything to look. So I hope this has been helpful at understanding the basics of Vex, Bops, and Python. And uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer you the best I can. And uh, you guys have a good one.